Welcome to segment three, Why Does Interprofessional Collaboration Matter? The Triple Aim in Healthcare. In this segment, we'll discuss the importance of interprofessional collaboration in providing high quality, safe care. We'll introduce the Triple Aim in Healthcare and the role of interprofessional collaboration in reaching the goals of the Triple Aim. And finally, we'll hear from an expert in quality improvement and patient safety, Sherry Van Osdahl, an assistant professor in the School of Pharmacy at UCSF. Let's start with a patient case. This is Sylvia Johnson, and she's a 35-year-old woman who presented to the emergency department due to an exacerbation of her chronic asthma. She informed the physician taking care of her in the emergency department that she was pregnant, and this was confirmed by a urine pregnancy test that was documented in the electronic medical record. She was admitted with a diagnosis of pneumonia. During the handoff from the emergency department to the floor, the patient's pregnancy status was not mentioned by either the nurse or the physician. And levofloxacin, a drug that's preferably avoided in pregnancy, was ordered and administered to Sylvia. The lab result did not interact with the drug database in the electronic medical record, so the pharmacist was unaware of the patient's pregnancy. Fortunately, there were no bad outcomes in this case, but as you can see from this real case, there were communication errors between providers at the time of a patient handoff and a systems issue that resulted in a safety issue for a patient. In 2000, the Institute of Medicine published to Air as Human, the first major public health report that indicated that the U.S. healthcare system wasn't as safe as was previously believed. In this report, they estimated that between 44 and 98,000 American deaths were attributable each year to medical errors. This is roughly equivalent to three 747 jet planes crashing every two days. Failures of communication were identified as a very common cause of medical errors. On the heels of errors human, the Institute of Medicine published Crossing the Quality Chasm a new healthcare system for the 21st century. This report presented several challenges for healthcare with the goal of making care safe, effective, patient-centered, timely, efficient, and equitable. Really for these goals to be achievable, the current system requires redesign. One of the main challenges identified for the redesign of healthcare was to develop highly functioning patient-centered teams. And in conjunction with this challenge, to think about better ways to prepare future healthcare professionals to work on patient-centered interprofessional teams. Following the Institute of Medicine reports, there's been a shift in thinking regarding medical errors and patient safety. National best practices recognize that errors are usually the result of systems problems rather than low-performing individual providers. And there's been a shift to focus on educating and developing interprofessional teams to improve the overall quality and safety of the care that we provide. High functioning teams have been shown to decrease uh, medical errors and improve patient safety. To enhance the quality of the healthcare we provide, to lower cost of care, and to improve patient satisfaction and quality of life. In line with the Institute of Medicine and the importance of teamwork in healthcare, the Institute for Healthcare Improvement, or the IHI, <clears throat> has developed three major goals to help shape the future of healthcare in the United States. These are known as the triple aim in healthcare. To meet the goals set out by the Crossing the Quality Chasm, IHI determined that sustainable positive change would be required in three different aspects of healthcare to improve patient experiences of care, and that would include improving the quality of care as well as patient satisfaction with care, to focus on improving the health of populations, not just individual patients, and then finally to reduce the per capita costs of healthcare. We know that in the United States, we spend a large portion of our gross national product on healthcare, yet what we receive is not always high quality. Interprofessional communication and collaboration will be essential in order to be able to achieve these goals. So let's go back to Sylvia's case. 
our patient who received a medication that generally should be avoided in pregnancy because the admitting doctor and team weren't aware that the patient was pregnant. How might this error have been avoided? Well, one way to avoid these types of errors is to use a structured handoff tool to facilitate communication at the time of transfer between the two services. Another way to avoid such an error would be systems, a systems change that would link the lab result with the drug database in the electronic health record, thus alerting the pharmacist to the patient's pregnancy status. In an upcoming module, we'll discuss uh, structured communication tools that could have been useful in this case. Now let's hear from Sherry Van Osdahl, who is an assistant professor in the School of Pharmacy here at UCSF. So we've been talking in this segment about the importance of interprofessional collaboration for patient uh, safety and for quality of care. We're fortunate to have an expert on patient safety and quality improvement, Sherry Van Osdahl from the School of Pharmacy at UCSF. Sherry, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your role as a pharmacist in quality and safety at UCSF? Absolutely. So as, as you mentioned, Maria, um, I am a member of the School of Pharmacy and I work in a group called the Medication Outcomes Center. And what we do is we really work closely with the medical center to evaluate our use of medications to make sure we're using them as safely and effectively as possible. And of course, to hopefully improve patient outcomes as we do so. Great, terrific. So what's the relationship between a team-based approach to patient care and quality and safety for patients? Well, I think a really large component about team-based care that we've been discussing is um, the importance of communication. And so within team-based care, there's a very strong communication structure. And to improve quality and patient safety, communication is key. So all members of the team really need to be able to discuss um, care plans, talk to the patient, assess the scenario so that we're all on the same page. Terrific. And so why is involving the entire team in patient safety important? Why is that so critical to safety? Well, as I mentioned, communication is key. And so um, there's actually data from the Joint Commission, which is an accreditation body for hospitals in the United States. And what they have as they look at um, sentinel events, which are serious safety events. Mm -hmm. And over a two year period, they had noticed that over 60% of sentinel events had the root cause of communication errors. So communication is very important. It's also important as different members of the team, so different professionals, we all have different perspectives. So as a pharmacist looking at a potential safety event, I'll have a very different perspective than you would as a physician or a nurse on the team or even a hospital administrator. Okay. Terrific. And so how do we teach our teams to communicate more effectively to avoid errors? What are some of the strategies that you've used? So some things that are very important is to really remove barriers to communication. So there are things like a hierarchical structure that has been very common in the history of medicine and um, hospital-based care. And so there's a large move in the safety um, literature and really safety communities across the country to say, let's remove this hierarchy and say, everybody on the team has an equal voice. Mm -hmm. And so in the past, perhaps um, in a stereotypical situation, there would be a surgeon or an attending physician who really didn't want the nurse or say a student to speak up about some kind of a concern or issue. However, the way that we're moving in the future is to say everybody has an equal voice and everybody's allowed to speak up to voice their concerns so that we make sure we don't miss anything. And so what are some of the trends in patient quality and safety that you see on the horizon for us? Well, something that I, I think is gonna be happening and it's really happening in a lot of places now is involving the patient as a member of the team. And so truly embracing the concept of patient-centered care. And so when a patient or their, their um, designee or care provider is involved in all decisions and discussions about that patient's care, it's really informative for the team. It really helps the patient or the, their patient's care providers, say a parent or designee, um, understand what is going on with their health and the decision-making process. And then they can 
actually start to provide some continuity of care as they move throughout the healthcare system to really improve communication and understanding of all the different healthcare providers who are involved, but also of that person itself, that patient itself. Um, something else that I think is a large movement that's really occurred since the Institute of Medicine report in 2000 is to improve transparency. And so if an error does occur as inevitably some kind of a safety error will, um, what institutions are really starting to embrace is talking about the errors to make sure that we learn from those mistakes and make sure that we don't make that same mistake again. Thanks so much for talking to me today. Um, it's been really informative, I think, for the students to kind of hear your perspective. Absolutely, thank you. Great. So what are the key learning points for this segment? Communication and systems failures are common causes of medical errors. Evidence is accumulating that interprofessional teams positively impact patient outcomes, including patient safety. Effective interprofessional collaboration and team-based care are essential to meet the goals of the triple aim set out by the Institute for Healthcare Improvement. And finally, quality and safety initiatives require participation by all members of the team in order to be effective. Let's check your understanding. Which of the following is not a goal of the triple aim? To improve the patient experience of care, to re reform the reimbursement system, to improve the health of populations, or to reduce the costs of care. That's right, B is the answer. Reforming the reimbursement system is not a goal of the triple aim.